Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, it looks like Chinese corporation Evergrande is going to loosen the chains that hold the Kraken. What is the Kraken, you might ask? It's the ancient Leviathan that's in the deep of the ocean. Something like a monstrous Godzilla. The Godzilla is the Kraken, except he's got wings. It's bigger than Godzilla. He's got wings, so he can fly. This is the Kraken. The Kraken is deflation, by the way. And he moves fast. He moves like the wind. Faster than the wind, he moves as fast as a, a bolt of lightning. This is the Kraken. Once the Kraken's released, he can fly over all the cities of Earth like a bolt of lightning. And his big wings beat down on the ground, and the buildings shake and tremble, and they fall to the Earth. This is the power of the Kraken. Now there's another little monster. And he's more like a cross between Luigi and Donkey Kong. And maybe a little bit of King Kong mixed in. And he's called inflation. And he swings back and forth between the big buildings in the city. And he shakes the buildings. He beats his chest. He makes a lot of loud noises. So they say, well, you know, I mean, what do we got to do? You know, we, got, we can't have this gorilla hopping from building to building. We got to do something about this. Well, what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get rid of him. We have tools. Chairman Powell, he waves his arms at the gorilla that's jumping between the buildings, the inflation. And he says, you're going to be transitory. Transitory, I say. And so they put the gorilla in chains and they lock him up. What happens then? Well, it's a strange thing. That is what triggers the Kraken. That and a big company in China called Evergrande. Ever, ever, <laughs> I keep forgetting the name. Uh, ever, Evergrande, Evergrande. Okay. <laughs> so the Kraken is loose, and it's the most powerful beast of all. But this, like Superman, has a nemesis. Superman's nemesis is kryptonite. Is there a kryptonite for Donkey Kong? You know, the little uh, uh, King Kong, Donkey Kong, that goes bouncing between the buildings that we call inflation. Is there a nemesis for him? Well, believe it or not, he doesn't have any nemesis. There is no kryptonite for him, but there is a kryptonite for the Kraken. And the kryptonite that kills the Kraken is called money creation. But, you know, the strange thing about it is, is the money creation is also a little saw that cuts the chains lead into little Donkey Kong's cage and lets him out. So if they use that tool on the Kraken... What'll happen? It'll free Donkey Kong. And Donkey Kong will go bouncing up and down on top of these buildings, just like they're little mushrooms, just like Luigi. So he swooshes some mushrooms. So we're in some pickle. What are they going to do? They got a choice between the Kraken and Donkey Kong. So they got all mad, and they said, we can't have that monkey jumping between our buildings anymore. We got to get rid of him. We got to put him in that cage. But the very act that they did to put little Donkey Kong in that cage is the exact act that pulled the chain on the big leviathan underneath the ocean, the Kraken. And now the Kraken has just woken up from his slumber. Oh, the Kraken can move fast through the system, frighteningly fast. It can actually freeze the entire system. 
in a matter of days, if not weeks. So what are they going to do if that happens? All the people that put Donkey Kong in the cage. Well, they're going to be running around like they got their hair on fire, but their hair is not going to barely be on fire. They're going to say, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? In a mad panic. The system is frozen. The Kraken has attacked. And he's frozen our system. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And so they'll be asking everybody, you got any ideas? You got any ideas? What are we going to do? And they'll say, no, I don't have any ideas. And Powell will be sitting over there, you know, and he'll be saying, oh, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do. Oh, uh, and then some guy said, pipes up and says, uh, well, there's a guy down in the, the office down on the first floor, and he says he knows what to do. His name's Sam. Sam, Sam's got an idea. Sam's got an idea. Bring Sam up. So Sam comes riding up the elevator, you know, and he's, he's about 20 years old. He's just been working there in the, in the paper shredding room, you know, and everything. <laughs> and they're asking, Sam, Sam, what about Sam's idea? So Sam whispers his idea to a few of these officials, you know. And they all been trying to think of ideas of their own. Some of them are coming up with maybe, uh, maybe we can get the system uh, boot started again somehow, or uh, maybe we can uh, uh, create a whole bunch of money here, or a whole bunch of money there, and get this system up and running. You know, all these different ideas they had. One guy yells, "Well, what about the trillion dollar coin?" And the room goes all quiet. You know, one guy says, "We well, we can reprice gold." We got a lot of gold in Fort Knox, don't we? And and you hear that all in the room, all of them go shh 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 we got that gold in Fort Knox, we do, don't we? Shh 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 Yeah, we got it, we got it, we got it. A couple of them murmur, you know, over in the corner of the room. Saying, Oh yeah, yeah, it's there. Gold's there. Gold's there. Okay, well we can reprice gold, maybe that's what we could do. You know, running over all these ideas. And the uh, chairman's sitting over there in the corner listening to it all, kind of with one hand on his chin, you know, a little bit, shaking his head up and down, thinking, oh, uh, I don't know, uh, this idea sounds pretty good. Well, that, uh, that idea, oh, I got, uh, maybe I got an idea. What, what about Sam's idea down in, the, down in the office down there? He had a good idea, didn't he? <laughs> Is this where we're going? Is this where we're going? Because I heard that corporation over there, Ever Evergrande, tonight has a hundred, uh, no, one point five million houses, and that number you're hearing, three hundred and five billion dollars that they owe, that's what they owe to over a hundred different banks. I think something like 150 different banks. Now you do, you know what you do when you when you got a big loan from a bank like that. If you're a big corporation like Evergrande, you get this big giant loan. Say it's a say it's two billion dollars from whatever bank it is. Right? You get this loan. If you don't pay it, that's called a non-performing loan. Now here's a funny thing about money creation. It's a one-way street with the banks. They can create money free and easy. All of this is a ledger entry. But once they create that loan, that money pops into existence, then the bank is on the hook for that money. That money has to be on the bank's ledger of the bank's assets. And once they've lent that money out, then they don't have control over that money anymore. And they are expecting to get it back with interest. If that money doesn't come back in interest and it comes in as a non-performing loan, suddenly the bank's on the hook for it. Where are they going to come up with $2 billion? Say Evergreen, say 150 different banks, lent them $2 billion a bank. Okay? Where are those banks going to come up with the $2 billion all of a sudden in a non-performing loan? And that makes a big black hole. It's like a... It's like a the, it's like the uh, the Death Star inside the bank. Then all of a sudden, this big 
gaping black two billion dollar hole in their books. He could th that company goes down and could take down 150 banks like that, I guess, from what I'm gathering, or over 100 anyway, with sizable loans to them over 305 billion. That's just the loans of that company. That's not all their assets. That's not all the land that they got. All these different parcels of land here, there, and everywhere, and they're into everything. They got amusement parks. They've got uh, all these different companies that they're connected to. Oh my goodness! This this thing has got tentacles everywhere. It's enormous. You're just looking at the three hundred and five billion dollars that they owe these banks. That's just the tip of the iceberg. We could be looking at valuations in excess of a trillion dollars when you count every damn thing they got. Here, there, and everywhere. Uh, no, this is, this is a big problem. I'm afraid. And I'm afraid this is going to be the trigger for the Kraken. He's going to awake. His great big round eyes are going to open up from down beneath the ocean. And his, his big giant wings are going to move and create tidal waves on the surface of the ocean as he starts to rumble to awake. And his power comes underneath his legs and he starts to stand up. Just like Godzilla. This is the power of the Kraken and the speed that he can move through the system. As one country, as one bank goes bankrupt, it has tentacles to other banks. And then all of a sudden, they, they don't have the money they thought they had. <coughs> and then it spreads like wildfire through the system at the speed that the Internet can carry transactions. It could create a desperate situation. Well, well what about Beijing? Won't they bail them out? At what expense? We've seen that different countries that bail out you know what happens then is uh, is, a, is a is a skew it's a change now we're going to consider one other fact here we're going to look at one more different thing here we have an immense slowdown going on in the united states of america because they ain't getting their stimmy checks anymore sorry it's done okay all across 7.5 million dollars now million people are off of unemployment i guarantee you these people are not buying off of amazon anymore these people are cutting back these people a lot of them a lot of them are being evicted they were spenders and spending during the covid crisis but now all of a sudden you hear that screeching sound of brakes coming on that's how the spending is going to slow down in the United States. So what products do, you, do they buy in the United States? Everything made from China. Where do you think the Chinese have, have uh, over the years, have got an awful lot of their, of, of, their, of their trade and all the factories that they work over there in? They sell to America. So all of a sudden, you know, the sales to America so could suddenly drop off a cliff because the Americans don't have any money to buy because the Fed didn't give them the money to buy. So what happens? Well, suddenly, Chinese sales fall off a cliff. Factory production falls off in China. At the same time, they get this Evergrande dumping on them on the other side so we got we got one side is dumping on china and then the other side is going to be dumping on china simultaneously so what happens next well this contagion can spread over here to americas you see and our stock markets all the stock markets all around the world suddenly start to fall cryptocurrencies the bottom drops out of it at first we see the bottom drop out of gold and silver. That's the start of the contagion coming through. But then as people get really, really frightened, it turns around for gold and silver, and gold and silver start to go up. The dollar shoots to the shoots up. Even though it's being compared against currencies that are garbage, 
Still, it's the best looking garbage. They're grabbing dollars as fast as they can. They're trying to get it out of the system in the form of cash. What do we got? We got a failing system. The Kraken has been released from his prison. The Kraken flies on his velvet wings through the air so fast he breaks the sound barrier over and over and over again in his, on his transatlantic flight from east to west. The Kraken strikes. The stock market falls so fast that there is no bottom. Trading is halted. Trading is halted again. Trading is closed and then halted again. Halted again. Because it's just goodbye Charlie. It's like it's fallen into oblivion. And this is when they're going to be running around. Like I said at the start of the show. Like they got their hair on fire. Because the system is going to freeze. Well, when that system freezes, they've got about two weeks left. If they can't get that thing running, God help us. It's a bank holiday. Everything's shut. All credit is stopped. Even, even credit to normal people. I'm talking about not just interbank lending, but we're talking about all credit halted. Everything grinds to a stop. The trucks stop running. They can't they can't get fuel. Everything stops. They got about two weeks to fix this. What do you think they're gonna do? Because this is This is Armageddon. And they know it. They know if they don't fix it, that not only are all of us done. But they're done too, and they got about maybe two weeks, maybe a month. I don't know. Maybe they can keep it stable for a month. Well, the first few minutes, they're going to feel a like their stomach just fell out. Because it's going to be on. It's going to be real. After a little while, they'll start to organize, and then they'll start to, like I say, they'll sit around a table and they'll weigh the ideas. What can we do? What can we do? What can we do? What can we do? They'll come up with it. They'll come up with an idea because there's a lot riding on this. Everything's riding on this for them and for us, but for them primarily. They know that it's on the line now. It's this is serious business. We got to get this financial system up and running before it's too late to get it up and running. And they'll come up with something. It'll probably be pretty good. Some sort of restructuring or something. Some sort of a reset. I don't know. But they'll come up with something. They will. And they'll get her crank started again. But there's going to be so much moving around. In the system. And then we're going to be on our way to the inflation. Because they're going to use the tool that they have, the one tool that they have that's a magic key to everything, and that is the control that they have over the currency. But to use that tool, like I say, remember the little Donkey Kong? They're going to free Donkey Kong again. But this time, he's going to create a rampage. But I'm going to tell you, for all of what Donkey Kong can do, and do his worst, it's not as bad as what the Kraken can do because the Kraken is the one that has the real power. And when they use that money tool, they're going to put the Kraken back down where he belongs, down under the ocean again, in, in chains. Because they can control the Kraken that way, with money. But the longer they wait, the more deeply entrenched the Kraken gets, the more money it's going to take to lock up the Kraken. 
But that effort is going to take to lock up the Kraken, which will probably be things like UBI, Universal Basic Income, will probably be on a list of some of the things. Uh, they might do things like create uh, credit cards for everybody in America. Maybe everybody in America, everybody in the world gets a credit card with maybe $50,000 on it. <laughs> You know, things like that. And and 0%, even negative interest rates might be. These some of the tricks, just some of the tricks they might use to get this thing fired up again. But once they get it fired up, and Donkey Kong takes off, Donkey Kong's going to go mad. And, but for all of his anger, he's probably not going to be able to do half the damage the Kraken could have done. But in the end, we're probably going to end up with a world that looks something like as if Venezuela was the whole world. So we'll still have power, <laughs> but it might be gone in places. This is going to be big, guys. This is really going to be big. And it's not going to be easy to fix. It's going to, be, it's going to bring a tremendous amount of upheaval before it gets repaired. And... Toward the end of it, there's so many twists and turns. Like, not the first part so much, but when we start to get further into it, when we start to get to the part where the system freezes up and stuff, or we start to get to the part where uh, the transition occurs and the hyperinflation really sets in, from that point forward, it's difficult for me to tell what way it, exactly it's going to all turn out or all pan out. There's so many variables that could happen once the hyperinflation occurs. Things like, how are the people going to react to that? You can't foresee into the future how the people are going to react to a hyperinflation. And so these are part of the variables that make it very difficult to see what happens after the hyperinflation actually begins. How does it all turn out in the end? That's almost impossible to know from this side. Looking at it from this side, you know. You can see what's going to happen up to the hyperinflation beginning, but then what's past that? But there's big dan red danger sign flashing on it. So we're not going to get through all this for the next five years or so. We're going to have some very, very interesting times indeed. And, and I mean, they're still not rid of the bug. You know, the, the, the bug. That's what they call flus and viruses. They call them bugs. Anyway, thanks guys for listening. Talk so much, I'm almost getting hoarse. And good night.